It's Bourbon Night. Hello, I'm Chad. I'm Sarah. And recently we went to the New Orleans Bourbon Festival. The That's correct. The fourth annual. Mm -hmm. The fourth our time. Four, our fourth year attending, but our first year uh, as speakers. Speakers. Can you believe it? Yeah. We feel all grown up. <laughs> No, it was great to be there, um, but we love the Grand Tastings because it gives us an opportunity to talk to distillers, new and old, friends and new faces. Yeah, and a lot like we did recently at the Kentucky Bourbon Festival, we decided to talk to uh, some of the distillers uh, and distilleries that maybe don't get as much coverage. Right, because you know, your Buffalo Traces and your Wild Turkeys and your Four Roses, while all great, get plenty of coverage. That's right, so we thought we would give uh, some of these uh, newer, relatively newer in the grand scheme of things, and craft. And, and craft distilleries some covered. So we went around and said, give us your elevator pitch. We tried some of their whiskeys and we thought we would pass that along to you. All right, so you can get to know them a little better. There we go. Based out of Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, Maryland used to be famous for rye whiskey. Back in the day, you know, 15, 1600s, really rum at the time, but then predominantly switched to rye whiskey in the early 1700s. Uh, we kept distilling through prohibition. It's one of the reasons we're called the free state. Uh, in 1910, we had 44 distilleries, 22 in downtown Baltimore. And, um, and then eventually the last distillery closed its doors in the early 80s, sold its name off to Heaven Hill, that's Pikesville Rye. But that brand and that identity of Maryland style rye, kind of known as a little bit sweeter, a little bit more fruity and floral rye, uh, continue to live on. And we thought that was a great opportunity for us to jump in. And so that's what we do. We're hyper-focused in on one thing, and that's Maryland style rye. We are Sweet Mash. Non chill filtered, uh, fermentation experts. They've been around in the industry for over 20 years. Uh, we use everything all locally grown, locally sourced, especially our rye. Uh, but our corn and our wheat are also lo locally sourced as well. And we're just really cool people and we have a good time. Well, we're an independent bottler and blender out of Louisville, Kentucky. So uh, this is a blend of three different bourbons and a rye. And we, t we went to Kelvin Cooper's. We work with Kelvin Cooper's on pretty much everything we do. Um, so they made these barrels specially for us that we finished it in. So they're French oak barrels and they alternate between toasted and charred staves. So it kind of looks like a zebra inside of it. It kind of gives you the benefits of a toasted and double oaked uh, bourbon in the same glass. Very spicy blend. I love This is my favorite batch we've done. I love it. Um, when we blend our whiskey, we take it to Kelvin and then Kelvin kind of works with us on finding the best way to barrel finish it, which is really kind of neat. Those guys have been doing it for generations. Nobody knows more about what a barrel is going to do to whiskey than, than they do. It's fantastic. It's been a ble blessing to work with them. We're Middle West Spirits. Uh, we're a distillery in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, we've been uh, distilling since 2008. We make our own stuff and we also make stuff for about 40 other suppliers across the country. Four or five that might be here tonight that I can't talk about. Um, Silly Meat, we're, we're just getting into uh, Louisiana and they said come down to Bourbon Fest. And I said, sure, I just brought our bourbon. I didn't realize I could bring everything else. So you'll see me next year, I'll have six or eight different different whiskeys that we make. But uh, we, we, uh, we do some very interesting things. Uh, one of which I didn't bring that we everybody loves to talk and hear about. We make the world's only dark pumpernickel rye whiskey. And we blend just a touch of that into our four grain bourbon that I brought tonight. Yeah, so this, this is a four grain bourbon. Obviously it's a backbone of corn. Uh, additionally, we use just a touch of barley, some wheat, and some of that uh, um, mentioned dark, dark pumpernickel rye. Yes. Now, a lot of the craft distillery booths were located outside, which means less light, which is totally fine for our human eyes, but for the camera lens can sometimes be a challenge. <laughs> now, we think yeah. that you can still see everything just you fine can in these. see everything fine, But yes. just give me a heads up. There are going to be some, uh, uh, what we call in the biz, some uh, focus hunting, uh. Uh, focus shifting there because of the low light. I hate it when that happens, but it is what it is. I didn't want to cut them out just right. because of that. So please forgive the focus issues in this next clip. We're from 40, Texas, just outside of Dallas. Uh, our distillery is called Five Points Distilling. Uh, we've been around since 2012. Um, we specialize in uh, straight wheat whiskey. Um, matter of fact, we won uh, uh, the best wheat distillery in Texas in uh, 2019, I believe. So, yeah. uh, we've been around since 2012, and we just, you know, been holding on to whiskey. And just, uh, I guess our big release was like in, in 2018. Um, but we're on the Texas Whiskey Trail. You know, with about you know 27 uh, other grain of glass distilleries, and you know we're rocking and rolling. Everybody wants wheat right now, so um, you know being a straight wheat, it's a 90% Texas soft red wooden wheat and a 10% malted barley blend. So it's aged in New American oak. Uh, 
the number three char in light tubs for a minimum of four years. So, uh, I would pour you our small batch first. So, small batch is uh, a marriage of uh, about 25 to 30 single barrels. And, uh, you know, we'll marry those to, uh, and then uh, proof it down to about um, 100 proof. And then we'll Jill Hayes filter it down to a 90. So, um, you get beautiful ambrosia flavors, dark cherry, uh, good tobacco smoke, nice saddle leather to it. Um, but, you know, the Courant, um, I think, and the Cassis are really nice too. It's very noticeable. Um, and it really depends on where in the rick house the barrel is because these are uh, these, most of our product came out of 15 gallon barrels just because in 2012 we couldn't i mean there was a big boom on everything so you couldn't find 53 gallon barrels to save your life so that's why we went 15s and then we graduated on the 30s after that but. Our Hotel Tango, we are a veteran owned distillery based out of Indianapolis. Uh, we have lots of different products, but these are our bourbon. So this is our flagship bourbon. It is our everyday drinking bourbon. Um, it was in the top 100 under $40 bourbons in America. And then this is a six year reserve. We have a rye, um, a cherry liqueur that has our bourbon in it. Cherries are from Michigan. It's going to be more tart. And then this is a brand new product, toasted marshmallow bourbon. It's coming out in about two weeks. So. Before we go on with the rest of the distilleries, we want to hit pause and tell you about our home on the internet. It is whiskeyambitions.com. It's where you can get the glassware that we use, hats, t-shirts, hoodies, water glasses like that, uh, pins, challenge coins, candles, and more always coming soon at whiskeyambitions.com. You can become a patron at patreon.com slash itsbourbonite and join our community for as little as one buck a month. That is where we release our exclusive Patreon-only barrel picks, the opportunity to participate in barrel picks depending on what tier you're at, uh, after the episode exclusives and more. My name is Kartik Sudhir. I'm the founder and CEO of Phenomenal Spirits, brand owner of Rye 3 and Ron is Alcohol Rum. Today, the second day of New Orleans Bourbon Festival, we are delighted. The weather has been phenomenal, and the people has been amazing, and this is a rye place, and we are, we are stoked to be presenting our rye whiskey. This is a barrel pick done for New Orleans Bourbon Festival. This is a blend of a 14-year, four-year, and a three-year rye whiskey, finished in a rum cask at a cast strength. Phenomenal sipper, beautiful and mellow. It's got a long finish. This is an exclusively made for bourbon drinkers. This is not a spicy rye. This is a right mellow rye, but has a long finish. Has all the characteristics of the rye whiskey, but the rum cast finish beautifully shaves off all the harsh edges of the of the of the of the of the, of the bite and the spiciness and mellows it down. So that's what's all about rye whiskey. Three different whiskeys, three different mash bills, three different age statements. That's why it's called rye three whiskey. Okay, so we've got several distilleries here on the table. We'll start with Buzzard's Roost, which is brand new to Louisiana. Um, we've got, they're sourcing right now, but they are working on building their own distillery. We've got a bourbon and two ryes. Uh, second, we've got Corner Creek here. It's been in the market for a while, but this latest iteration is a blend of five and seven year bourbons, one of which is a high wheat Nashville. Next, we've got Kings County, which was the first post-prohibition distillery in New York. Um, We've got their straight bourbon whiskey, we've got their peated bourbon, and then their chocolate whiskey. They take their straight bourbon whiskey, macerate it with cacao husks, and that's the chocolate whiskey. It's like drinking liquid dark chocolate. It's amazing. And then last, we've got uh, High Plains Rye from Jim Rutledge, who was formerly at um, Four Roses. And it's uh, four, five different distillates from four different states. Everything is grain to bottle. It's all sourced locally. Oats are the only thing that we get in, in uh, outside of Indiana. Those come from Kentucky. Um, the mainline products that we have with us are all bottled in bond, so they're 100 proof, four years old. The Lee Sinclair, which is the one that won some awards tonight, is made with oats. It's really sweet and creamy. Um, that's our signature kind of flagship bourbon. We are located in French Lake, Indiana. We started out as a winery in 1995 and then added the distillery on in 2016. So that's, it's, we're still really new, kind of in, still in the startup phase, but really excited that we've got four year product finally. And we're coming out with some five and six year product as well later on. But we've also got a weighted bourbon with us. More, uh, Maddie Gladden is our high rye at 35% rye. And then the Morning Glory is one of our newer ones. It's made with Pasha, which is toasted buffalo. 
So yeah, it's got some toasted cereal notes to it, little Reese's Pieces in there. Um, it's really good. It's our dessert bourbon. Easy Rider bourbon, this is a four-year-old Kentucky straight bourbon. Right. So all three bourbons are obviously being made in Kentucky. They're being distilled in Kentucky. They're being aged in Kentucky. Um, what we do with them at Hood River, though, is we like to put an, uh, a Northwest spin on all of our stuff, right? So we bring these casks from Kentucky into Hood River, uh, and we're using Mount Hood spring water on this. So this is just cut to 80 proof, Mount Hood spring water. Really, really nice, easy drinking whiskey. Now, the trails in eight year, we put a little bit of an extra spin on it, right? So aged four years longer than this one. Um, but what we're doing with this is we're actually using uh, uh, organ oak staves on this, right? So we're taking a brand new era organ oak, lightly toasting that organ oak, and then finishing it with that, right? We're bottling this at 90 proof, and again, using that uh, organ spring water. Finally, trails in 10 year, so aged two additional years, Rather than staves on this, we're actually transferring this whiskey from Kentucky barrels, and we're putting those in Oregon oak barrels, so Garyana oak. So we're taking that white oak, lightly toasting it, transferring the liquid from one barrel into a second barrel. And now this one's at 105 per. Award winning! Yes! Well, the New Orleans Bourbon Festival, it was great to be back because they had to cancel, of course, for the past two years, so uh, it was great to be back. Fourth time there, fourth year, would have been the sixth if the world hadn't have gotten crazy there. But it happens. We're just happy to be back and yeah. hang out with some, again, some old old faces, some mm -hmm. new faces. Yeah, um, making new old friends. friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we saw some patrons there. So just yeah. good to be back in the community. Back at it, yes. And uh, we didn't get to get every booth to talk to them on camera because, you know, you're out there, you're having fun, you want to have some food that they have there and stuff. So and time flies. Apologies to those that we did not get to, but glad that we got to the ones that we did get to. Exciting stuff. Hope you enjoyed it. Hey, if you haven't subscribed to us already, you can do so by clicking right up here. There's suggestions of other videos down here, and we hope to see you over there in one of those. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. <laughs> Until next time, drink more bourbon. Bye.